Is there a best practice to follow with regard to Helm files in terms of uh, using inheritance and keeping things dry? So uh, currently uh, his setup is to, is a remote mono chart. So Cloud Posse has this pattern of a mono chart I can go into later uh, with zero assumptions made, i.e. only default labels like app uh, which refers to the common name of uh, this um, this chart. So, uh, however, I have a bunch of services that essentially follow the same pattern. I'll use uh, the traffic ingress annotations, a Redis pod, uh, etc. Using the traffic ingress annotation instead of having all those annotations copied uh, to every service's Helm files, should I have a remote parent Helm file? And, and uh, can I even reference, I mean, if this is a thing, or should I have a separate mono chart with more assumptions and, and all the default traffic ingress annotations I want, et cetera. So I, I, uh, my opinion on this would be to not off, for this purpose, this is like for your, cust your, let me take a step back. So everyone's on the same page. First introduce the concept of this mono chart and then answer the question in context of that. So. Monochart is a convention that we've adopted at Cloud Posse. Um, it, it's a kind of Helm chart that we use, which is generalized as a subset of the capabilities of a Kubernetes manifest. And it exposes only what you typically use in Kubernetes. Um, this is our monochart is hyper opinionated to Cloud Posse. But with our customers, we help them adopt their own mono chart strategy, which can be more simple or more opinionated. So things you do in a mono chart is like define the interface for how you deploy to Kubernetes. Um, do you want your apps to always be deployments? Uh, do you want to uh, have your apps always define an ingress? Do you want your apps to always use uh, config maps and depend on secrets? Do you want your apps to um, you know, depend on local storage in some kind of way, you abstract that away so that when you uh, deploy an app, you just pick the mono chart, you set a minimal set of values for your chart and deploy it. So an example of what that looks like is if we go into Cloud Posse Helm files, I'm going to search for, um, in here, I'm just going to search for mono chart. So what's a, yeah, so here's an example of deploying Lighthouse CI um, using our mono chart. So sometimes, here's the thing, sometimes vendors provide charts and they're great and they support annotations and they support you disabling the ingress and they support any other little things you want to do. And sometimes they just suck. Um, but uh, they do provide an image and I'd rather not at least manage the Docker image, but we can use our mono chart. So in this case, I don't remember the backstory of why we are using mono chart for Lighthouse CI, but this serves as an example of how we can do it. So we're just referencing the Cloud Posse mono chart. We're specifying the image. We're specifying that we want it deployed as a deployment. We want a rolling, strat uh, rolling update strategy and we, um, are modifying the args that we invoke uh, the container with. We set the resource limits. We pass our config maps. We um, uh, we enable uh, some Postgres, uh, I guess, uh, setting here and persistence and ingress. Uh, so it it's similar to what you could do in Kubernetes natively without using the mono chart. It's just it's a simplified subset of the patterns that we use that we can then document and uh, communicate to the customers. So now let me put that in context to what, um, any questions th so far before I get into putting into context with Brian's question? All right. So uh, one of the things Brian is doing in deploying these his apps consistently in his company is always specifying the annotations that he needs for traffic. Uh, or, or annotations uh, needed by Redis and possibly other labels, and it can grow from there. 
I think that this is where you're defining the interface for what it what what it requires to deploy an application in your company's environment. So I think it would make sense for you to define your own company's chart uh, that has those as required settings to pass. Um, uh, Jeremy points out you can use bases in Helm files. Bases are a great way to kind of uh, import uh, layers that you have shared um, in other YAML files that get uh, combined. Um, we use bases. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we have an example right now in our Helm files repo here. I think we try and leave bases out of this part of the implementation. Yeah, we don't, we don't in our Helm files. Yeah, we, we don't have any yeah. public bases. Yeah, all our bases are used in customer implementations. Um, are you familiar with bases and what they can do, um, Brian? I, I'm not too familiar, but um, I guess that I was curious whether people are use. I, I, I saw like a even a um, a issue that you opened with Helm file a couple of years ago, um, talking about kind of using remote Helm files, which got me wondering like. Oh, we, what, what people thought whether to like have a remote Helm file with these assumptions already made, like all the annotations already filled in for us, or and that one would use. Oh, uh, I see. We're sorry. I got you a little bit better now. And yeah, yeah. So it's it's basically wondering like which one do people prefer prefer? Because I know a lot of people here use Helm files. So I, I assume yeah. that um, that maybe some uh, already have. A, a good opinion on what is a better approach for like put the assumptions in the mono chart or have a parent Elm I file see. that I see. has those annotations already, for example, and then just reference that parent Helm file for every service. Before I chime in, I want to give other uh, people an opportunity to say how they're using Helm file. Or not. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 Hel the remote Helm file thing was probably the biggest game changer for us in using Helm file. I mean, it's been there now for years, uh, but uh, remote Helm files make Helm file work like Terraform modules. Um, yeah. And we've, uh, we've, by the way, uh, this is a good announcement for everyone else. We've republished all of our Helm files about two weeks ago. Um, our previous Helm files that we had are still there. We moved them to a deprecated folder. These were not, we were not personally using these in new engagements. These were on like life support for maintenance uh, for other uh, engagements. But uh, all our latest Helm files that we're using in our engagements are now here. All of these have been updated to use Helm file environments as opposed to environment variables. So when we want to deploy like the reloader, we can reference this uh, remote Helm file. And this remote Helm file has defined all, is using uh, environments uh, for all the values. So values corresponds to environments. And then, and then you can define your own, uh, then when you, then locally, you define what your, uh, what your settings are. So what's really nice about this is you just get a very minimal declarative uh, experience for how to deploy given Helm release. So I guess the answer there then, Brian, becomes, I guess it yes, depends. That it, YAML file is kind of the size that I'm looking for, right, for every service, because they're all essentially the same type of, like, yeah. type of service. You, you know, like, if you're a company, maybe everybody builds tiny Go services. For us, it's like tiny Django services and yep. um, tiny JavaScript, you know, React front end. Django backend services. So like they're all the same, but they're running yep. different applications and really just the name and the image is different, right? And like maybe like some of them require more CPU requests or things like that, but generally everything is about the same. And I didn't want to have like a hundred line Helm file if I could avoid it when, and then copy out, copy that to every single service that we're deploying. Yeah, I agree with that. So instead what you can do um, with remote Helm files, just since not everyone has maybe seen what that looks like. And that, let's see if we have, we should have an example here, but I think it was, I think we might have removed that example because it was a little out of date. Um, where do I have an example? That's public. 
So um, while you're looking for that, so now that you better understand my question, would you suggest adding that those assumptions in the mono chart or in the remote home chart or in the remote home file? I think so. Uh, I think that uh, assuming you don't control the mono chart, then I would just stick them in the Helm file and you don't have to fork and it just works. Yeah. Um, and then uh, here's an example on my screen of Helm files, except this, this is not remote, but just imagine this being a Git URL. Yeah. Uh, and that's all it is. So now your apps can just have a single file like this defined called Helm file, which says, I need this version of Helm file from here. I need this version of Helm file from here. And you can, def over, you can set the values locally. Uh, but the definition of all that wall of YAML for how to deploy a Helm release can be remote and centralized. Yeah. yeah, so so my thinking was like, I really wanted to minimize the amount of changes I would make to the the like very base mono chart, Helm chart. Yeah. Um, and that's why I kind of wanted this second layer of a, like a parent Helm file. Um, so... Because if you make a change to that mono chart, then like essentially every service that uses it, you'd either have to like upgrade the version for every single one or to or point it to the new git ref. And like I wanted to um I didn't want to necessarily make like have that like those type of changes to be uh, to be made to the mono chart as frequently. Like if you have a parent home file or multiple parent home files, then those changes have a smaller subset of um, you know, services that use that parent home file. Yeah, no, that, that, that jives with uh, our thinking as well.